Heads in from the side, how is it going? My name's Timmy Joe, making videos about computers. All up on the internet, mother, it's a motherboard. <laughs> Today on the program, uh, it's really hard to go like ultra budget right now, unless you wanna go like super old school or, you know, compens, you know, uh, compromise, compensate, compromise on, uh, you know, the thread count, the core count of CPUs, because uh, it's just, uh, maybe in the States, you'd be like, what are you talking about? I can get a Ryzen 1600 for nothing, for five bucks, this whatever, 25 bucks. You, the, around the world, it's a little bit harder right now. And I have a CPU on the docket. $8.90 gets you six cores, 12 threads on the Ivy Bridge Intel platform. Yes, and uh, it even gets better from there. $40 motherboard? Throw some $50 worth of 16 gigs DDR3 in there. And for around $100, we have a system here that's sort of good, sort of worth it. So, LGA 1356, you ever heard of it? Me neither, not really. I was uh, about a year and a half ago, uh, that's how old this, I've had this stuff. Uh, was looking for an X79 motherboard. And I just wanted to test a CPU I had, a six core. Uh, and I didn't know if it worked or not. And I thought, well, I'll get one of those cheap Chinese motherboards. So I looked up AliExpress, typed in X79, bought the cheapest one at the time, it was 50 bucks, 56 bucks, 51 bucks. And uh, it arrived and I went to put the CPU in it and I'm like, this is not fitting. I might've even damaged a pin or two trying I know that sounds crazy, but it's like, here, look at the difference. Um, uh, you know, one side we have a normal sized uh, Ivy Bridge CPU. In the middle, we have the CPU in question. And on the other side, we have an X79 a lot bigger. So I was super confused. And uh, I went and looked at what the CPUs were available for this. E5-2420, six cores, 12 threads, low frequency, <laughs> 2.5 gig, but um, don't worry about that. And uh, it was $8.90. So I was like, I'll buy one of those. And then I waited the month and a half it took to get there from AliExpress from China. And then I put it all together and it didn't boot. And I was like, some of those pins look bent. I don't care about this anymore. And then uh, about a month or two later, um, I saw that Phil's computer lab had this whole setup going on. I was like, damn it, he beat me to the punch even though I already had all the hardware, if only it would have worked. And uh, then Hardware Unbox jumped on his video because he was saying this was actually sort of a valid gaming platform, which I argue it kind of is. Um, but Hardware Unbox like blew that apart comparing it to a Ryzen 1600. Uh, you know, that's just silly. And uh, because they're really not in the same league, but frequency wise. Uh, but uh, anyways, I decided then to try and make it work. I bent some pins back. It still wasn't working. I tried some different memory and had way better success. And then I put it in this box and now I'm finally getting to it. Uh, when I moved back in here, I was like, oh yeah, that thing, I could do a video on that. And surprisingly, pretty damn decent gaming performance. I mean, you have to keep your expectations low at the frequencies that these things are running at, but they're running at like laptop, you know, performance. Lap, like, you know, a couple years ago, uh, but those usually have like maybe four threads or four threads and, uh, or eight threads, you know, four cores, eight threads. Uh, this thing here, you know, it's, uh, we're talking about ultra portables and stuff like that. This thing here has an 80 watt TDP. So it's gonna be not the greatest. In fact, I'm running Cinebench right now here in single core. It's up on the screen there. It's running, it's been running since way before I turned on the camera. It takes a long time. 2.5 gigahertz we see here. Uh, ignore these temperatures because there's no way that's right. Uh, it's running at 30 degrees, running a single core right now. And uh, it's, it's bouncing around, um, we go, it gets up to 2.5 gigahertz. I don't know why it's, it's stalled here. I have the power settings all jacked on it, so it, it's a base of 2.2 and it says it goes to 2.7 on one core, but I don't see that it's happening, but this motherboard is super weird, so it's probably not doing the frequencies that it should, but it tends to get to 2.5 on all cores in an all core load. At least it did last boot, I don't know why it's, cutting off at 2.2 gigahertz there on, on some cores. But anyways, long story short, I finally, while I was moving over here, found this again and said I should do a video on it. And I start looking up prices and that's where this thing gets super crazy interesting. Still $8.99 or 90 cents for the CPU for a six core, 12 thread Intel Ivy Bridge CPU on the 22 nanometer process. That sounds awesome. 2.2 to 2.7 gigahertz, probably around 2.5. That does not sound great. But if you think about like ultra portable laptops and stuff like that, 
that that's probably that you know kind of performance so it's not like way off of the spectrum well okay it's got 61 single core cpu frequency here and as i run cinebench okay it is going to 2.5 gigahertz on all core i want you to see the watt meter it's 86 watts right now running all core cinebench 15 workload and i've got an intel stock cooler on it it's got oh, it's 40 degrees on the package <laughs> running at 2.5 gigahertz so like 83 watts that's with an ultra efficient fsp platinum power supply mind you but that's really good for the kind of performance we're getting this is like crazy power efficient it would make sense these were for like ultra low power surfers i guess if you look at motherboards for this chipset they're all weird configurations so they're definitely all out of server racks and stuff like that there might be some workstations that use this i don't I'm trying to find like what the market was for this but apparently there was enough of them they can resell them for eight dollars and ninety cents these days 82 watts coming out of the wall while it's running cinnamon chart 15. And yeah, we're running 15 right now because it would take forever to run 20 single core. So 651 in Cinebench, that's, uh, uh, well, Sandy Bridge, but, uh, or whatever. Um, it's uh, 3770 performance, non-K stock performance. So it has four threads, two cores less than that one. And with the frequencies that it's running, it's only getting 651. That's pretty low by today's standards. So, but it's not that, that bad. In comparison, here I'll load up Cinebench or 20 and try and run that on here. Uh, by comparison, a good 1600 running, you know, 1600X we'll say, might get like 1300. So it would get about double the score, which makes sense. I'd say similar IPC, but the frequency might uh, be the hindering factor, you know, at 2.5 gigahertz versus well over three, depending on the 1600 you get or whatever. We'll run this and just uh, see if it can uh, happen in a timely fashion. You know what, I'll let it run and then we'll get to some gaming benchmarks. So I ran five games here, new and old. See, it takes forever to even get Cinnamon Char 20 rolling, but uh, is it still running at 2.5 gigahertz? So maybe this will complete in a timely fashion. Anyway, so I ran some games, 2080 Ti, not a card you would ever put on this. Uh, but I did it anyways, and it definitely more than halves the performance of the video card. But it wasn't that bad. It wasn't as, here. We'll run the benchmarks. I'll talk over them a little bit, and then when we come back, we'll t we'll see what the Cinebench score is, and I'll tell you the best part. The total system price here is actually pretty remarkable, as long as you're not looking for too too much out of you know, this price bracket. So here, roll the benchmarks, Timmy, Timmy. Okay, so we load into Fortnite and things aren't looking great at first here. Lots of stutter, but this new Shield Marvel thing, it's just, it's not running good in any computer. So I was a little worried at first, but when you actually load in to some real gameplay, we see here, it's not as bad as one might think. I'm at 118, 100 frames per second here. Yeah, there's really bad frame times here. And especially when you compare it to the 10, 700K. Wasn't able to get the win off a of Sheik Hulk here, but, uh, not great, but not terrible performance. Certainly playable. Moving on to Far Cry 5, a very CPU intensive title. It's uh, doing well here because of all those cores and threads. Uh, I'm gonna like see there's a fire on screen, you know, and we're getting 60 frames a second. It's not great, 64 frames on average. That's less than half, same as Fortnite, uh, than a proper CPU, 10700K would do. But uh, I'm beating up the uh, the fire flamethrower guy here just fine. And uh, this is a completely playable experience at 1080p ultra settings. All all these are at max settings. So CSGO, would you play competitively with this CPU? Well, no, because there's definitely some frame issues. But we see the utilization on all cores, pretty surprised at that. And uh, it's not doing a half bad job. Way less than half the frames we get on a proper CPU, 10700K. But keeping in mind, this is 2.5 gigahertz. I'm getting a little shotgun kill there. This is not too, too bad. And as long as you're not playing competitively, you can always take the settings down too, right? Moving on to Crisis though, uh, this is, where things kind of tank. This is an older game, would not be optimized for lots of cores and low thread count. Uh, and yeah, this is a very CPU intensive spot with all this uh, water and rain falling out of the sky. We're not seeing great results here, like 16 and 12 for 1% lows, nah, under 60 frames a second when we're at 143 with a proper CPU. 
but uh, totally playable. You know, it's not going to be great. You can turn some settings down and make it a little bit better. And then when we get into Shadow of the Tomb Raider here, we see that mountain. Oh, there it goes. It pops in. Not great. Uh, 108 FPS doesn't seem so bad right now. 64 on average in the benchmark up to this point. But things really start to tank once we turn towards this village. Very CPU intensive, uh, all the MPZs and stuff like that in this game. And we instantly see it go from like up in the 80s down to 60, down to 40, down to 30. And then I'm going to cut away to some of the villagers here. Oh yeah, we're at 32 frames a second here. Really bad frame times. Down to 24 frames a second with a 2080 Ti with some of these villagers walking around. So not going to be the greatest experience all around, but this is with maxed out graphics, remember? So it's not entirely terrible. So, um, I mean, if you compare them to the 10700K, it does definitely look terrible. Uh, but would you pair this graphics card with this? No. I think if you paired it with an RX 580 or RX 570, you're not going to get you know, all the performance out of one of those graphics cards. But it, like, let's stick into budget here. Let's say you find a really good 5, 470, 570 uh, with four gigs of RAM for a decent price. Some of you out there and, you know, saying you get them for $80 USD or less. And then you pair it with this system. It sounds pretty awesome. Get a really cheap SSD, some budget, you know, chassis. You can get a system together for real, real cheap here. So, $8.90 for that CPU, to 6 cores, 12 threads, 2.2 to 2.7 gigahertz. Get one of these motherboards off of AliExpress. They're kind of hard to sift through to find the right one. Make sure it says LGA1356. And uh, I found one on there, 40 bucks up on the screen here. It even has an, NV, well, an M.2 slot. Has a couple more SATAs than this thing. Probably a much better board than this. Actually, this is a terrible board. Uh, but that was 40 bucks. So what, we're up to 50 bucks. And then, you know, on AliExpress, you can get a stick of eight gigabyte, 1600 megahertz memory for, uh, well, it might even be worth it to just get 1333 because I couldn't get any faster than 1333 working on this thing. But uh, 25 bucks each. So, you know, get 16 gigs of RAM, two sticks. So it runs in dual channel and then uh, put that all together. That's a hundred dollars, six core, 12 thread system for a for hundred dollars. That doesn't sound out of this realm. It doesn't sound crazy. It sounds really like a good deal. And when you pair it with that gaming performance I just showed you in a more of an appropriate GPU for this, you could definitely game at 1080p. Uh, you know, maybe you're looking to go a little bit even older generation, like a GTX 960 or, uh, you know, uh, older like a 7970 or something like that. Some older generation of card that, you know, you know you can't expect too much because it only has two or three gigs of VRAM, but you want to play League of Legends. You want to play some of these lower end games and maybe you're like kind of interested in playing one of those newer AAA titles, but you don't care about jacking down the settings to medium or something like that to get a, a playable experience. Well, this could be a go to because imagine a Ryzen. Yeah, it's going to get you much better performance. But it's going to be hard to find even a motherboard for a uh, hundred dollars, let alone a motherboard RAM and CPU. At least from my perspective, maybe in the states you could find. You definitely be hard to find a Ryzen sixteen hundred for a hundred dollars. This thing is the whole system, you know, is a hundred dollars. The whole motherboard, CPU, and RAM. So pretty good. Finally got our Cinebench R twenty result thirteen ninety eight. Is that good? No, not at all. Let's see, where does that position it? Uh, around a four core Intel i5 3550 CPU, which would be a locked CPU. So it's only slightly faster than, uh, you know, something that only has four cores, four threads, when this has 12 threads. But yeah, so, I mean, you know, the whole time, still, what, a max out of 46 degrees with the Intel stock cooler. You know, it was running at, uh, with an efficient power supply, 90 watts. When you start getting gaming, it's going to get a little bit, depending on your graphics card, more than that, of course, but you could run this with a really crappy power supply, 450 watt power supply and a GTX 570. There's your gaming machine. Find a really, you know, crappy chassis, make one yourself, fire it all in there with a half decent SSD. You can get gaming on that, honey. You could do it. So I like it. Intel Xeon E5 2420. I think that as a budget choice for $100 for a motherboard CPU RAM that has six cores, 12 threads, we see that all those games except for Crisis 
was utilizing all those threads. And with the exception of Fortnite's new update with the Marvel thing with the uh, shield ship that you, whatever, the aircraft carrier that's in the sky, that thing tanks performance and it actually ends up looking really bad. Once I got on the ground and I was just doing a normal Fortnite thing, it was pretty decent. And yes, it more than half the performance of a ultra high-end GPU like the 2080 Ti here. But with a budget GPU, I don't see that being too big a problem. As long as you keep your expectations in check, 2.5 gigahertz on you know six cores might be enough to game these days because things have kind of changed. So I'm gonna watch Timmy Joe Instagram and Twitter. Am I out of my gourd here? Is this a terrible suggestion for a budget computer? I, I kind of, I mean, you'd have to be a tinkerer. You definitely have to be willing to put up with some BS. Uh, I think I had RAM compatibility issues with this. The BIOS is like ultra old and definitely not favorable to like change settings in. I did max out the power settings. That's all I could really do, but it's not taking advantage of the 1600 megahertz RAM I've got in there. And uh, maybe I'm, I'm not gonna like, advocate for going and buying one of these things, but if you're a tinkerer, you wanna make a budget system for a friend or something like that, this might be an avenue to go, as long as the pricing in your area on used rides and stuff, uh, you know, is, is, is bad. Because like, you're not gonna find an Intel with six cores, 12 threads for anywhere near this price. It's just impossible. I don't know, anyways. I'm at watch Joe Instagram and Twitter. I had a lot of fun playing around with this. It did better than I thought it would, and I hope you enjoyed my video. You have yourself a beautiful day.